Over the last 15 to 20 years, and really it's become more of a phenomenon in the last 10 years, private equity and venture capital have really grown in size due to cheap money. What's happened is that as central banks pegged rates close to zero for a long period of time, and this actually started in the Greenspan era, and it worked it's all the way through the early 2000s when you kept rates very low. It basically forced people to go out on the risk spectrum and look for alternative investments. And private equity and venture capital were good sources for this money. You know, they, they typically, private equity can get you returns of over 10%. Venture capital can get you returns over 20%. And so they found very easy money from yield chasers, people who needed to get higher returns. A lot of pension funds, endowments, foundations, they all reached out to get higher rates of return to keep their funding status positive. So that money then flowed into private equity, venture capital, and real estate, looking for returns that were going to get them close to their bogey, their bogey being, let's call it 8%. And so that's why they, they, they went out on the risk spectrum, is because they were forced to try to get higher returns. And you saw that dramatically across all pension funds in the U.S. Um, some of the largest pension funds have, have allocation that have gone from maybe 5% into alternatives, now up to 40 to 50% of their pension funds are in these alternative investments. We'll see how that all ends up over the next three to four years. By reaching out on these risk spectrums, you've added a lot of risk profile to a lot of these pension funds, endowments, and foundations. And so by doing that, it's, it's opened them all up to a lot more risk going forward now because they, a lot of money in private equity and venture capital it goes more towards the riskier spectrum. It's not what you would consider a conservative investment, especially on the venture capital. Now, in some private equities, they would probably argue with you on that. But if you look at the risk spectrum, they are out a little bit more in the risk spectrum. Back to your original question, low interest rates is what drove the growth into both of those investments, including real estate sector. Now that the interest rates have started to normalize, you know, to 4 to 5%, what happens is that private equity still has the same opportunities to invest in, and they can probably still get the same type of returns over the long run. But if you're a pension fund and a downward or foundation, you don't need to take that risk anymore. Now you can put that money into a, a 10-year bond that's getting 4.85% or 5%, or you can put it into a two-year. There are other options now that are safer. And so less money is going to flow into these investments mainly because there's other options that are, that are less risky. You're still seeing money flowing into venture capital and private equity, but it's not flowing in like it was over the last five to 10 years. Again, the reason for that lack of money flowing into these funds now is because you can get a really good return by putting money into a T-bill, a two-year treasury, or three, five, 10, all of these now are yielding close to 5 or just under 5%. And so you don't need to add a lot of risk in your portfolio anymore. You know, if you're a pension fund you know, and your bogey is 8%, you can build a good equity bond portfolio now. That has not been available for a long time, you know, probably 15 years since you've been able to build a nice balanced portfolio. Now, the equity portion is still going to have some risk. Is there space in these portfolios still for private equity and venture? Yes. I don't think it needs to be 40%, though. It'll probably, it'll probably go back to the traditional where you have maybe a 5 to 15% allocation to private equity, venture capital, and real estate as you normalize interest rates. <music>